Shalom. This week we are reading Parashat Ekev, and this Torah portion opens with a promise of a great reward. This shall be the reward when you hearken to these ordinances and you observe and perform them. Hashem your God will safeguard for you the covenant and the kindness that He swore to your forefathers. He will love you, He will bless you and multiply you, and He will bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain, your wine, and your oil, the offspring of your cattle, and the flocks of your sheep and goats on the land that He swore to your forefathers to give you. Now, by the way, if these terms don't speak to you, if you might not be able to relate to such agrarian terminology, or perhaps there may be those who feel that they are agriculturally challenged, it's not only about sheep and goats, it's about your portfolio, it's about your options, about your securities and your retirement funds and your lifestyle and your dreams and your happiness and your fulfillments and your yin and your yang and your karma and your dharma and your fun and your meaning is what these verses are really referring to, the fullness of life. The verses go on to say, for example, you will be the most blessed of all the peoples. There will be no infertile male or infertile female among you or among your animals. Hashem will remove from you every illness and all the bad maladies of Egypt that you knew. He will not put them upon you, but will put them upon all your foes. You will devour all the peoples that Hashem your God will deliver to you. Your eyes shall not pity them. You shall not worship their gods, for it is a snare for you. Now, our sages have an issue with this parsha. They have an issue with the word akiv, the name of the parsha, which is also the third word. And we read in Hebrew, the first sentence, v'haya akiv, tishmu'un et ha'mishpatim ha'ela u'shmartem v'asitam otam v'shamar ha'sham elokecha. If you will observe these commandments. But actually, when we read this verse, we didn't even translate this word, akev. We read, this shall be the reward when you hearken to these ordinances. So we're not really translating this word, akev, which actually on one level means foot, or more specifically it means the heel. But it is used in the Torah to denote because. For example, in Genesis 26, 5, the verse says, Because, Akev, because Abraham obeyed my voice. So if I had to translate it really, I would have read, This shall be the reward because you will hearken to these ordinances. Although there is a tendency to translate it as if, because of course we're going to be obeying the commandments, and that's how the word Akev is used in Genesis 26, 5, because Abraham listened to God's command and was prepared to slaughter his son. So this is the background on this first verse, and there is a Midrashic tradition here that the concept referred to here, there's an allusion, the background of Parshat Akev. Again, that double meaning, there is a, there is a there is a reference to something that is underfoot, to the heel. So there's something being alluded to here, and that is, according to the Midrash Tanhuma, that there are certain mitzvot that one might have a tendency to trample underfoot. We think that not all the mitzvot, not all of God's commandments are equal. We have a tendency to think maybe some of them are not as important as others, and therefore, Maybe they don't bring the same reward, and therefore we might take them for granted. And that, in the terminology of our sages, is derived from the hidden meaning of this word, akev, is that we trample them underfoot. So, the significance of the verse that opens up this parsha, according to this understanding of our sages, is that if we will be careful to observe these lesser mitzvot, or as our sages put it, the ones that are maybe not guaranteeing the same reward, they're not as exciting. They don't seem to be as, as, um, as grandiose. But our sages say, who's to know the worth of the mitzvot? You don't really know. So we have to be careful with all of them, even those that don't seem to be all that important. And in some way, this theme sets the mood and the background for our Parsha. Be aware, be forewarned, 
that there seem to be some commandments that we don't think so highly of. We assume that they aren't as important and we, again, take them for granted, the idea of maybe stepping on them. Now, there are three main concepts in this Torah portion. There is the concept of the reminders and the warnings against forgetting Hashem and becoming rebellious. For example, we read, Take care, lest you forget Hashem your God by not observing His commandments, His ordinances, and His decrees, which I command you today, lest you eat and be satisfied, you build good houses, and it shall be that if you forget Hashem your God and go after the gods of others and worship them and prostrate yourself to them, then I testify against you today that you will surely perish. Several warnings that we have here in chapter 9. We have, do not say in your hearts when Hashem pushes them away from before you, because of my righteousness did Hashem bring me to possess this land, and because of the weakness of these nations. There is a number of repeated warnings here. Remember, do not forget that you provoked Hashem. I have seen this people, and behold, the stiff-necked people. So that's one of the themes of our Torah portion. And there's also another theme, and that theme is the importance of the performance of the commandments. For example, we read here, Now, O Israel, what does Hashem your God ask of you? only to fear Hashem your God, to go in all His ways and to love Him, and to serve Hashem your God with all your heart and with all your soul, to observe the commandments of, Hashem's and his, of Hashem and His decrees. Also in this week's Torah portion, we have the second portion of the Shema, Parshat Vahaya Im Shemo, which actually is the section of the daily Shema that emphasizes the acceptance of our responsibility to the commandments. And the third concept, major theme of this week's Torah portion is the absolute preeminence of the land of Israel, which is praised above all else. This is really the whole beginning of the Torah portion. The concept of the land, the produce of the land, and our receiving this blessing in the land, and in the beginning of the parsha goes on to tell us how we will conduct ourselves vis-a-vis -vis the other nations that were occupying the land before we arrived. And all of the emphasis of the tremendous beauty and sustenance and blessing of the land of Israel. <clears throat> For Hashem your God is bringing you to a good land, a land with streams of water, of springs and underground water coming forth in valley and mountain, a land of wheat, barley, grape, fig, and pomegranate, a land of olive oil and date honey, a land where you will eat bread without poverty, and you will lack nothing there, a land whose stones are iron and from whose mountains you will mine copper. You will eat and you will be satisfied and bless Hashem your God for the good land that He gave you. So the verses are emphasizing to us that we will be eating bread in the land of Israel, not because there's nothing else to eat, not because of poverty that we choose bread over delicacies, but because the bread of the land is the delicacy. And there's nothing in this verse about gold and silver and precious jewels, but rather the stones of this land are iron, and from whose mountains you will mine copper. These are the basic necessities of real life. So this is not about uh, some fantasy. This is not about some never-never land, but this real land that provides for all of our needs. And then, of course, we read in chapter 11, for the land to which you come to possess it. It is not like the land of Egypt that you left, where you would plant your seed and water it on foot like a vegetable garden, but the land to which you cross over to possess it is a land of mountains and valleys. From the rain of heaven it drinks water, a land that Hashem your God seeks out. The eyes of Hashem your God are always upon it, from the beginning of the year to year's end. And this verse is so amazing and so beautiful. Eretz asher Hashem elokecha doresho tatamid, the land that Hashem your God is constantly seeking out. 
Ene Hashem Elokecha Ba, the eyes of Hashem your God are on it. Mereshit Hashana, the Ad Acharit Shana, from the beginning of the year to year's end. And actually, as we just read it in Hebrew, the verse is very specific because the beginning of the year is identified with the definitive hey. It's the beginning of the year, Mereshit Hashana. It's the beginning of the year to year's end. And <clears throat> There's, there's a bit of a, um, a harsh message here. It's a bit acerbic slightly because the beginning of the year is specifically identified but not the end of the year. And one of the messages of this verse is that it's a little difficult to hear. That, you know, when the year begins, it's always everyone is excited that maybe this will be the year. Maybe this will be the year that we will fulfill our potential. Maybe this will be the year that we will come home. Maybe it will be this year if we can get our act together. But by the end of the year, it became like every other year. And so one of the messages of this verse is that maybe this will be the year that we will get it straight. So this Torah portion, warnings about our forgetting, the centrality of the commandments in our lives, and most importantly, the total preoccupation, the preeminence, the absolute importance of the land of Israel. Why are we reading this Torah portion this week? This comes as either tremendous affirmation for the people of Israel or as very bad news for the world, because there doesn't seem to be any room in this Torah portion for negotiations for giving this land away. But maybe if we open up our hearts, we can understand a very deep message in this Torah portion. Maybe this is truly the message behind the scenes and between the lines of the word Akev. Maybe there is a connection here between the idea that there are things that we are taking for granted, overlooking, perhaps somewhat trampling underfoot, and the major concept of this week's Torah portion, which is the land of Israel and the intrinsic value of the Jewish people living in the land of Israel and fulfilling their potential by observing Hashem's commandments in this land. Perhaps we collectively are trampling Eretz Israel underfoot because we're not so sure of its value and its reward. And maybe we think that we can't do it as we are warned in the very beginning of the Torah portion, perhaps you will say in your heart, these nations are more numerous than I. How will I, how will I be able to drive them out? Do not fear them. You shall remember what Hashem your God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. Perhaps we think that the nations are too overwhelming for us. And perhaps we are totally frightened by the European Union's boycotts and by the aggressive diplomatic efforts of John Kerry. And now this week, as we read Parashat Ekev, rumor has it that the new set of negotiations that Israel is being encouraged to begin will be based on Israel's being required to relinquish the Temple Mount and to withdraw to the 1967 borders. But this Parsha is like a telegram that has just arrived for John Kerry and for the European Union and for the rest of the world because at the very end of the Torah portion, the Jewish people are told, For if you will observe this entire commandment that I command you to perform it, to love Hashem your God, to walk in all His ways and to cleave to Him, Hashem will drive out all these nations from before you and you will drive out greater and mightier nations than yourselves. Every place where the sole of your foot will tread shall be yours. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, from the river, the Euphrates River, until the Western Sea shall be your boundary. You can't make this up. No man will stand up against you. Hashem your God will set your terror and fear on the entire face of the earth where you will tread as He spoke to you. And so, Mireshit Hashana Ad Achritshana from the beginning of the year. Why don't we get our act together and make this the year? Parshat Ekev is telling us to stop taking the land of Israel for granted and to stop allowing it to be trampled underfoot.
And I'll share with you another context in which the word akev is used. The word heal is used to denote on a, on a mystical level the very days that we are living in, called ikvata de Meshicha, the days of the coming of the Messiah, when the footsteps of the Messiah are heard around the corner. So, one more time, we read, every place where the sole of your foot will tread shall be yours. There doesn't seem to be any room here for any ridiculous, convoluted, self-destructive negotiations from the wilderness and the Lebanon, from the river, the Euphrates River, until the Western Sea. We actually have to ask for much more. Shall be your boundary. No man will stand up against you. Hashem, your God, will set your terror and fear on the entire face of the earth where you will tread as He spoke to you. And that is what is referred to as, yes, we can.